Welcome to Christian Assembly of Schriever, a full gospel Bible believing church. We are people who love God, who worship Him and praise Him. Please join us now for a great word that the Lord has for us today. To, that we get to come here week after week and worship you and learn and grow in you, Father, that daily we get to serve you and live for you because it is a privilege, it is an honor, God. You truly are so incredible, so amazing, Father. God, we just pray that you would have your way in this service this morning. We invite you in, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now is the time to worship, Amen.
before you come. He changes you when you come. Right. Amen. Who oh, I'm so thankful. Amen. Man, I'm just so thankful because there's so many times in my life that I have seen God make ways for me that I never thought would ever be possible. And not only in my life, I've seen him do it in multiple people's life. You know, so if there's some an impossible situation that you're facing in your life, can I tell you something this morning? We serve a miracle working God. Amen. And there is nothing that he cannot do. Amen.
such hope because you know what we face some hard things in life and if we lived based on our feelings man we'd be in trouble (laughs) but I'm so glad that my God is not a God of feelings you know he's a God of love and compassion but you know what he's already got the answer all figured out so he's just saying hey just just trust me I got you have I ever let you down before no you may thought he did But I promise you, he didn't. Those times when you fell and you thought, man, I just can't go on, guess who was carrying you and brought you to where you are today? He's never left you. That much I can promise you. He's always, always working. Thank you, God. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy.
To you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy.
You love the Lord. God is, and all the time he's good. We praise God. I want to give praise reports for a lot of people who have gone through a lot of things these last couple of weeks. Um, I'm thankful that I was not, that not had to be at work these last few weeks because I got to visit folks who are going through stuff. 
Amen. And it's been it's been a joy just to spend time with people. Amen. And watch God touch their heart. Amen. If you're going through something, praise God that you are okay. Sister Liz, it's good to see you. Brother David, amen. Brother Randy, amen. Who am I missing? Amen. Just been through some junk. Amen. But how do you know that God is always with us through the junk? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glad to be in the house of the Lord. I see some, some beautiful faces from the past back there. This road right about there. These people I've known for a long time, and they're here with us this morning. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house? For more than one reason, it's hot out there. You could look at that as a spiritual connotation, too. Hey, if you want to be out in the world, it's hot out there. Come in, come in a house where it's cool and good and safe and all right. Genesis chapter 4. Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this day. Father, you are here in this place, and we just reach out with our hearts to you today. Lord, have your way in us. Help not one to leave here the same way they showed up. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, Be encouraged today, because I am not preaching to your neighbor. I'm preaching to you. And preaching to myself. Amen. That God might be glorified in us today. Listen, we are all human. I don't know if you were born human, but I was. And sometimes we get, you know, in some crossroads and we don't always take the right direction. But praise be to God that his grace is always with us and that God loves us and he never will leave us nor forsake us. Amen. And what he starts in us, he's faithful to complete that work even to the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am excited because I get to preach a message that God gave me about two weeks ago. Amen. It's about Cain and Abel. How many of you are familiar with the story? Yeah. Amen. As the Lord was just moving in this place, he, he gave me this message. I'm, I had so, a lot of notes written down on this, and, I, and the Holy Spirit just encouraged me, just preach this. Just preach it. Sometimes we need some teaching, sometimes we just need some preaching. Amen. Are you ready? Amen. Cain and Abel, 1 of chapter 4 of Genesis chapter 4. Now Adam had relations with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant. When she gave birth to Cain, she said, With the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. Now, I want you to understand something. Some people think they might have been twins. I don't know if they were twins or if they were just born sometime apart. But she has two children now. And to have a man child be born to you was a great blessing. It is no slam on ladies. But that's kind of the way it was back then. Amen. And uh, not that they didn't get excited when they had a woman child. They just had a, a thing of uh, spiritual position and things that God would favor when they had a firstborn who was male. And so verse 2, later she gave birth to a brother named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry, and he looked dejected. It's amazing that they should name them Cain and Abel. Today I want to preach to you today that Cain had an attitude because he was not able. You, can't, you caught it? Cain had an attitude because he was not able. Cain's name was correct for him. Amen? Because the way he felt, Cain do nothing right. Cain please God. Cain, please my mom and dad. Cain be the favorite. Can't earn the favor of the Lord. Are you with me? Some of you are here. Is your name Cain? Listen, if all I look at in myself 
is what I can't do. I will never do anything productive. If all I can do is look at my past, I will never move forward in God. If I can't get past <laughs> the mistakes I made, if I can't get past the failures that I have caused, if I can't, are you with me? If I can't put away anything that stands between me and God, I will never move forward with Jesus. Amen. Listen, part of the reason why we get upset, depressed in church is because we think it's under our own strength that we are set free. It is not by our own strength. It is through the power of the Son of the living God that we are made free, that we are made whole, and that we can walk in the fullness of God. Listen, are you with me? You see why Cain did not realize that Cain was able. Cain was able. Ha! Because through Christ, I can do all things who gives me strength. The Good News translation of the Bible says, I am able to do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yes, it's not of our own strength. It's not of our own power. It's not of our own wisdom. We can't do nothing without Christ in our lives. Amen. Nothing worth living for. Because see here, we as Christians, we have to have our focus on what is eternal and what is everlasting life. This world is not our home. We are just passing through. Amen. Some for a brief moment, some for a long moment, but we're still just passing through with the same destination. Amen. And our, and our faith should be, should be pressed toward Jesus looking forward to what's coming next. Don't, I don't know why I'm preaching quite like this, but don't be afraid of the rapture. Be excited about it. Huh? Don't look at it as a fearful day. Look at it as a day of excitement. We get to go home because this ain't our home. This is just the dwelling place that the Lord put us while we're in these human bodies. Praise God, I'm going to receive a new body, a new N-E-W body. Old things are passed away. Whew. How many of you looking forward to that? Boy, when you get out of bed in the morning, I, I never made noise before getting up and sitting down. But I do now. Oh, Lord. And when I get around some of my peeps, it sounds like a herd of cattle moving out there. Oh. Ah. That's why God calls us sheep. Ah. Uh. Amen. Ha. Old things are passed away. Thank you, Jesus. And old things are going to become new in that time. Let's get back to the Word of God. Remember, Cain had a bad attitude because in his eyes he was not able. You see, Abel, verse 4 again, also brought a gift, the best of the firstborn lambs from his flock. And the Lord accepted that gift. But why did he not accept Cain's gift? Look back in verse 3. You see, in verse 4 it tells us that Abel brought a gift the best, say that with me, the best of the firstborn lambs, the firstborn lambs from his flock. And the Lord accepted his gift. Why didn't he accept Cain's? Cain presented some of his crops. It didn't say the first fruits. It didn't say the choices. It didn't say the best. Cain, uh, Abel gave, Abel was able to please God, and his gift was able to be received because Abel loved God. And because he loved God, it showed in his daily actions. He took care. It takes time to raise a lamb. It takes time to make sure that it's without spot, without blemish. He made sure that my gift, when I present it to the Lord, is going to be without spot and without wrinkle. He took care of that gift. He knew that he was going to present it before Jesus. Amen. He wanted to be sure it was the choices of everything he had. I'm going to give him my choicest portions. Cain just gave some. Probably what was left over in the barn. Mm -hmm. You see, Cain's problem is he wanted God's best.
but he wasn't willing to give his best. Sometimes we want God's best, but are we willing to give our best? Because you reap. Listen, can I help you with something? It ain't karma. You know what karma is? It's a Hindu belief. It ain't karma. It's reaping and sowing and sowing and reaping. The Bible says that God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. What did Abel sow? Man, Abel sowed in the best portions, the first of his firstborn. He gave, he gave to the Lord his best and from his heart. The way that he raised this sacrifice to God gives you an indication of how much he loved God and was probably the, the honor that he brought to his parents because of that. And I'm sure that they talked about Abel with eyes of appreciation. Look at that boy. He is a keeper of the sheep, and he's out there being faithful. Look at him sacrificing. Look at Adam, come here. Look at your son. That boy, we're so proud of him. He's offering the best to God. Look at Cain over there. Being all sad looking. Bringing his little molded squash. Oh, we're trying to help him, Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help that boy. He, 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 can't, he can't do anything right. Listen, he brought his stuff. Now, did, did Cain bring that poor offering to the Lord because he was just had a bad attitude? Or was there something to cause his bad attitude? People just don't develop bad attitudes for no reason. And Cain's problem was is that he couldn't let things go. Now, understand something. As being the firstborn, you were... What? Inheritor of the birthright. Which meant you got a double portion of your father's inheritance. Being the firstborn, that's what you received. That, was, that came to you just for being the firstborn. Amen? Now, Abel was not the firstborn. But Abel, it seemed to be, in Cain's eyes, had the favor of God upon him. And why was God's favor not upon me? I was the firstborn. I should be receiving accolades. I should be receiving God's approval. I should be receiving praises of God like Abel is. See, he couldn't understand. He thought that, hey, I'm entitled because I am firstborn. Listen, Christians, we are not entitled to the blessings of God just because we're Christian. Salvation, love of God for us is unconditional. His mercy is unconditional. His grace is unconditional. When we get saved, it's because of his unconditional love. Through faith in him, then we are born again. But blessings are conditional. How many of you ever grew up in your house? With siblings? You grew up in a house with siblings. And one of you went out there and cut the grass. Your mom and dad didn't even have to ask you. And you are there with a push mower. It's 102 degree weather. And you sweating. And you're singing, give your praise to the Lord. Come on, everybody, stand up and sing one more. And Fred is in the house going, look at that fool in the heat cutting the grass. Which one do you think your mom and daddy is going to give the chocolate milk to with the cookies? You or Fred? Are you with me? Now, you may not get kicked out of the house, but you just might get white milk instead of chocolate milk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you see, we want chocolate milk blessings with a white milk effort. And then it's only 2%. Or some want to do the skim thing. I ain't never seen no skim cow ever in my life. My wife tried to help me one time and got some skim milk. I said, did you just dip this glass into the dishwater? There are some things I will not, I just will not do. But see, that's the problem with church today is we want chocolate milk blessings for us. 2% effort. Listen, and that's what Cain wanted. 
He wanted God's best. He craved God's best. He did because he had an attitude, and that shows that he did want God's best upon his life. He did desire the blessings of God upon his life, but he couldn't obtain it, it seems, and he didn't quite understand why. I think he knew he had an attitude. I'm sure his mom and dad probably told him. Amen. But all he could ever hear in his brain was Abel, Abel, Abel. Come to Brady Bunch. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. She's the favorite. She always gets everything. You see, I can say this now. My mom's going to be with the Lord, so I can say this openly. She told me I was her favorite. <laughs> Tom, you know what I'm talking about. I didn't share it with my brother and sister because I didn't want them to be, you know, jealous and that. Man. My brother probably would have punched me in my face. Talisa would have punched me in my face for sure. Listen, God loves us so much. And he has so much for us. And I'm going to tell you one thing. He's ready to bless us. But then sometimes we withhold his hand. You see, God was not trying to be mean to Cain. But God cannot and will not go back on his promises. And God is not going to allow us to skate by with less than our best to him. Amen? I, was, I had two ninth grade years and two twelfth grade years in school. <laughs> it wasn't because the teachers did not, didn't like me. It's because I wanted you too. Amen. Raise your hand if you had two senior years and two. A few of you here. Amen. You turned out pretty good. I, I, well, I expected that in that sound booth back there. Y'all can put your hands down. <laughs> but <laughs> you got graded based on your performance. You see, God grades us based on the things that we do because he sees our heart. I want to make something clear right now. He did not reject Cain's offering because it was from the ground. Because there are many offerings that were grain offerings and other offerings like that that were acceptable unto the Lord. It was how he presented it. I heard once on television, I, I, I thought it was a great analogy. Um, okay, it was Bill Cosby, God bless him. But it was on his show. But he, he gave an analogy that really makes a whole lot of sense. He asked someone, what is your favorite meal? Something that you just like to have every now and then that's just wonderful. And the guy said, ooh, I, I love a good steak sometimes. He said, okay, steak. He said, boy, you can, you can, put the, you can go into the restaurant and you can watch, it, watch them cook the steak. You can hear it on the, on the grill. Shh. However, you want it, however you want it done, it's good. Can you smell steak cooking? Can you smell it right now? He said, boy, you can smell that steak cooking. And he said, it's cooking just like you want. And the fragrances and the odors are there. And then what you like with it? He said, oh, boy, I'd like to have some mushrooms. Okay, mushrooms. How about some smothered onion? Put some smothered. Are you with me? How many of you haven't eaten yet? Raise your hand. And you can smell it. And <laughs> And he said, like to have some crispy potatoes to go with that, with that steak. And he said, he said, okay, the cook does all that. He, he cooks all that for you. But he doesn't take the food and put it on a plate. He goes to where the garbage can is and takes the lid off of that garbage can and places it on that garbage can lid. He said, not too appetizing, is it? It's in our presentation. The Lord does not look upon us with favor because we came to church today. He looks for the purpose for which you're here. Amen? That's what God looks. The Lord looks at the intents of the heart. The Lord does not give us accolades every time we raise our hand to praise him. It's why. The Lord doesn't look at us and because we, had, we fed 90 plates and say, oh, what a wonderful. It's why. And if you would have the same excitement if it were one. You see, that's what the Lord looks at. He looks at upon our heart. But also when we are like Cain and we mess up and Cain see nothing but the negative, God looks upon our heart with desire for us to open our eyes and see that we can have what Abel has and we're able to attain what Abel does if we would do like Abel. Why was Abel Abel? 
He loved God. And because he loved God, it showed in his actions. The, he, the presentation that he was going to give to God when he knew it was harvest time, he knew that, man, I'm going to gather the, first, the firstborn of my flocks, the, the best portions, the favorite portions, and also in other places, the fat portions. God likes fat. Come on, can you say amen? And I'm going to bring this together, and I get to present it to my God who gave everything for me. You see, even the laws were not even written yet on sacrifices. It wasn't. We're talking about Genesis, still not far from the garden, not far removed the garden. The law of Moses hadn't come yet because Moses wasn't there yet. Levitical laws hadn't been written yet, so he wasn't following the letter of the law. He was following his heart because he loved God. Amen. He acted in a way that pleased God and blessed God. Ain't nobody got to tell me to pray if I love God. Ain't nobody got to tell me to be in church if I love God. Ain't nobody got to tell me to reach out to others if I love God. Because if I love God, I'll love others. And if I love others, it proves I love God. Are you with me? So Abel was able because he pleased God because what he offered from his heart. That's why the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It doesn't say, be thou perfect in thou singing. Are you with me? If all you can pipe out is blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. If it's with all your heart, God says, that is my child. How many of your grandparents in here? You know if your grandchild sang like that, you say, look how beautiful they sing it. <laughs> Especially the grandmas, that's my baby. Grandpa's going. I love him. Are you with me? Blood and grandchildren. It's not. It's not. <laughs> What you got is how you offer it to God. You see, it's not the life that we live that, that blesses God as far as being or how good we are or how wonderful we think we can be or how much of a blessing to the church we think we are, so on and so on and so on. It's how we present ourselves to God every day. How many of you sinned this week? Raise your hand. I think I was getting no hand raised on that one. Amen. Listen, God never excuses any of our sins. But he does look up on our heart and shows us mercy despite our sin. Let's read on. I want to finish this before, before it's time to be quiet. Listen. This is what God says after that. Verse Let's go back to verse 4. Abel also brought a gift, the best of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift, but he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry, and he looked dejected. Listen, there are times we think that God is not doing anything with us, and we get angry with the Lord. We get angry with God. God, why are you not blessing me? God, why don't see you moving? Do you love me less than you love other people? Let's be real. I don't know if you've ever asked that question before. I have. God, I see other people getting blessed. Is, is there something wrong with me? Now, I did make a dumb statement a while back. This was years ago. My life was blessed, going right in every direction for a long, 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 long time. And I heard a message about how through our sufferings is what identifies us with Christ. And this was my prayer one time. I said, Lord, do you not love me? that I'm not going through trials and tribulations like my brothers and sisters, that I can show you my affliction and suffer with you that I might be recognized by you. Bow! <laughs> then I said, wait a minute. <laughs> it was just a question. But you know what? God's been answering my prayer like that ever since. Because some of you may be thinking even now, well, how did this turn out well for Abel? He was killed by Cain. Let me tell you what. I'm going to come to that in a second. Hold on. Verse 6, God is asking Cain, 
So that means he was still talking to Cain, right? And Cain still had the ability to hear the voice of the Lord. He said, why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain, verse 6. Why do you look so dejected? Verse 7, very important to this message. You will be accepted if you do what is right. That word right means right in God's eyes or what puts us in right standing with Christ. It cannot be what is right in our eyes. Society has well proven that they don't know what's right or righteous. Amen. Or what keeps us right with God. Do you love the Lord? And some churches as well. But if you refuse, say that we're with me, refuse. If you refuse to do what is right, then watch out, exclamation point. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its master. When does sin jump on you? Sin is an opportunist. It looks for you whenever your faith is lacking in God or whether you stop praising God or whether you stop reading your Bible or you stay out of the prayer closet. Sin is at your very door. Listen, the further away you get from God, the closer sin will get to you and some demon will make sure because the devil knows when to attack you. He can't get to you if you're close to Christ. The devil can't come into my prayer closet. If he does, he ain't staying. You love the Lord. Will you, you will be accepted if you do right, but if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must have done it and be its master. He's telling Cain, you are able if you will decide to do what's right, if you will decide to trust me, if you will decide to believe in me, if you will decide to understand how much I love you too, not just able. God does not love one person more than he loves us. He's no respecter of persons. If God will bless me, he'll bless you. If he'll bless you, he'll bless me. Amen. But in, where am I with when it comes to the positioning to be able to receive my blessing is what's important. He was trying to get Cain to understand, dude, you're not receiving the blessings because you refuse to do what's right. I cannot bless that. I cannot bless that. How many of you ever, back when, when whoopings were still allowed? <laughs> Either when you were about to receive a whooping or when you're about to give a whooping, you tell your child why they're getting the whooping. My daddy used to tell us why while he was whooping us. Didn't I say not to go and do this? And yet, I thought he was reciting Psalm 119, all 170, 176 verses. Daddy, what you doing back there, man? Come on, let's. But I never turned around and said that. Because we did have a friend, he was spanking his child when we can hear them in the next room. And after about the first six licks, the boy turned around and said, Are you done? I told him, I said, Let's go. We're about, to cook. We're, about to, we're about to witness a felony up in here. You know how you know I never told my dad that? I'm standing. Not having to drink soup through a straw. Praise you, Jesus. So one day Cain suggested to his brother, what happened? It shows right here in verse 8 that Cain received nothing of what the Holy Spirit was trying to share with him. Listen, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. That's not just the truth of the Word of God. It's also the truth about ourselves. We cannot refuse to understand the truth about ourselves when God is the one trying to tell us, here's what's going on. It's not happening because this is in your life. You need to get this out of your life. You need to put this sin away. You need to forgive so-and-so. You, you need to get it right. And then I'll bless your socks off, man. But Cain did not receive that. So what did he do? One day Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out into the fields. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and did what? He killed him. Verse 9. Afterward, the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Where is Abel? And you can almost hear him saying, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? He has lost all reverence for God. 
all reverence. But the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. Now you are cursed and banished from the ground which has swallowed your brother's blood. Why was he cursed? Because he, he, he pushed himself away from the source of his blessing. Uh, hang on with me just a little bit. Verse 12 says, No longer will the ground yield good crops for you, no matter how hard you work. From now on, you'll be a homeless wanderer on the earth. And Cain replied, My punishment is too great for me to bear, still wanting the best from God while giving his worst. Hmm. You have banished me from the land and from your presence. You have made me a homeless wonder. Anyone who finds will kill me. Now, I want you to understand something. Never did God say, am I banishing you from my presence? You know why? Because God makes a promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you even to the ends of the earth. You could sin your worst sin and have your worst attitude toward God and he will never walk away from you. Cain was the one who said that. Not God. Now God told him, you know, curse is a ground because man, look at you, your attitude is all wrong. At any time, <laughs> he could have repented and found the mercies of God. God would have restored his life and restored the purpose for which he created him. God did not create Cain to kill Abel, to give a good Bible story. If Cain would have realized how able he was through God, there would be no story where he killed Abel. This story would be completely different. That tells me something. I've heard a lot lately that God is still writing our story. But I've also heard, if God is writing your story, give him the pen. Because we want to be in control of writing our own story. God, I, I love you, but, you know, and, and, we, and sometimes we, when we get saved, we're pushing on and we're going on. And then, just be honest, you know, as we're serving God, God begins to write down something. Or we read something he's already written. And we try to take the pen from God and say, let me, let me handle this part. Let me put my own testimony here. And that's why he got in trouble. Cain tried to write his own story, his own way. I believe he had desires for God, but he refused to do what was right. He just wanted to give God whatever and expect God's best. It's not how that works. He was not willing to submit to the plan of the Lord for his life. Look what happened. Then he said, now he says, my punishment is too great. Anyone who finds it will kill me. The Lord replied, no, for I will give a sevenfold punishment to anyone who kills you. God is still trying to show this guy some mercy. Then the Lord put a mark on him to warn anyone who might try. I know that mark is, hadn't gotten that far in the study, but verse 16 is what bothers me the most about this entire story. So Cain left the Lord's presence and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Sister Debbie, if you don't mind coming to the piano. I guess you're playing altar. I'm sure I should ask that before. He left the presence of the Lord and encamped himself just east of Eden. What was Eden? Paradise. Why do you think he went there? I think he was still trying to remind himself, Eden is what I desire, but I can't attain it. Because look what I've done. I've gone too far. I believe he came to that point as well. I've gone too far. There's no way God's going to give, give me paradise. There's no way he's going to bless me. I've done too much wrong. I've done too much bad. That is not how God works. That is not how God works. God's mercy is never ending. 
His loving kindness and his mercy is renewed every day. We are saved by grace, not by works, good or bad. Thus we should boast in ourselves. It is through his grace that we are saved. Will you stand with me today? Listen, I don't know where you're at today. But in which persona have you been living or been walking? Have you come to a spot in your life where you just feel like, God, I just don't feel able that I can do anything for you. You bow your head and close your eyes. And you might say, Lord, I messed up too bad. How in the world can you now bless me the way you blessed Abel? How can you make me able? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Because as you come to Christ with your issue and you surrender your heart fully to the Lord, if you're willing today to not offer a 2% blessing or offering to God, if you're willing to give all of yourself, the best of yourself, the best portions of your life, not a 2% portion to God, it's all of yourself, because with God, it's all or nothing. But Troy, what are you talking about? God desires full commitment from us. Not just on Sundays, but every day. A daily walk with Him. 100%. It doesn't mean we're not going to come across temptations or issues. It doesn't mean we're not even going to fall sometimes. We will. But those who stay close to God, God is able to lower His hand and lift you up when you fall. No matter what you've done, no matter how far you've gotten away from God, there's still a chance to come repent. Listen, some of you may be holding some animosities or some unforgiveness to someone else. It's time to let that go. It's time to let go of past hurts. It's time to let go of past. And listen, if you notice something in this, in this story, one of the hardest things is that Abel's own brother killed him. Sometimes it's the ones closest to us that hurt us the most. And we walk around with that hurt and those scars for so many years. And it blocks our peace. It blocks our joy. Or we may have messed up so bad that we forget about how deep God's grace and mercy goes. And then we do just like Cain. We just see all the negative and we don't come close to God. We leave his presence. And we'll never find redemption because we walk away, not because God walks away. The Lord would never walk away from you. He'll never turn a deaf ear to you. He would never condemn you. He would never, ever, ever push you away. Don't let that happen. So, Pastor Troy, what do I do today? Glad you asked that too. <laughs> if there is a sin issue that keeps you separate from God because the Bible tells us in Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 that our sin separates us from the Lord. So how do we get reunited with God? Give Him your sin. Ask Him to forgive you. Renew your commitment with Him today through repentance. And the blessings of God will be for you. And God's favor will outshine anything that you've done wrong. His grace forgives everything. If you're hurting today because of past things, let's give it to Jesus. If there's someone you have to forgive in your heart, give it to Jesus because we know for sure that if we don't forgive others, the Lord's very clear and says, I cannot forgive you. Give it to Jesus, man so that you are able to see God's blessings in your life, so that you're able to see God moving in your life, 
so that you're able to see the restorations that God gives you in your life. Are you with me? If there's anything that you are battling with today and you are ready to surrender it to the Lord and say, God, make me able. All I've been able to do is see the bad side of all this, but Lord, I want to be able to see you again. I want to be able to feel your joy again. I want to be able to have peace again. I want to know what it's like. Like the day I got saved when I was set free and I just felt the burden roll away. Lord, I'm carrying a burden that's too heavy for me. Will you take it? Is that you? Please raise your hand right now. If you want it, if you want to give it to Jesus, I'm seeing people raise their hands. If you want to be free, if you want to be free, lift your hand. Do not be afraid. Do not be ashamed. Get back where you need to be with Jesus. He loves you, man. I've seen many hands go up this morning. If your hand didn't go up, then it leads me to believe that you are all right with God. And if that is true, I want you to lift your hand and pray for those whose hands were lifted. And if you lifted up your hands when I gave the invitation, raise them up again as a sign of surrender to the Lord. Say, Lord, make me able make me able. Your word says I can do all things through Christ. Lord, I'm getting straight today. This thing that I've kept in my heart, this pet sin, God, I give it to you. Lord, I give it to you in the name of Jesus. Please forgive me. Wash it from me in the name of Jesus. Wash my heart clean from this sin. Make me whole. Refresh me in you. Father God, I've been hurt by my dad, by my mom, by an uncle or an aunt. Lord, I've been by someone who's been close to me. Lord, I, today, I want to get past that because it's keeping me from being able to see your blessings in my life. It's keeping me from being able to move forward in you. I give that to you in Jesus' name. Father, I forgive that person right now I forgive that person let me tell you something God may be speaking to you later if it's a matter of unforgiveness as you surrender this to the Lord right now God may have you go to that person there is a freeing power that happens when you obey God in that and don't rehash the past just offer forgiveness that's all he wants you to do is offer forgiveness it'll free you up like you've never believed It might be a pastor or another church that's hurt you. Give it to Jesus. Give it to him right now. Whatever it is that's keeping you on the negative side of life, in your point of view, or is getting in the way of your faith, or making you not able to see God's favor in your life, give it to the Lord. And the Lord will restore you right now the moment you lay it down so tell the God I give it to you I lay it at your feet Jesus have your way in me have your way in me I present my offering to you which is me Lord I'm giving you all of my heart my soul my mind my body everything have your way in me that's you today you prayed a prayer to any of those things God has taken care of it it's in the sea of forgetfulness and now you've been positioned in direction in your life where you're gonna begin to see the flow of God's blessings in your life the flow of God's presence in your life get back in God's presence get back in his presence get back in your prayer closet Get back in your day-to-day -day Bible study. Get back in your meditation before the Lord. Get back there. Get back there and stay there. It doesn't have to be a lot of time in the day. That's how you present yourself to the Lord. He loves you so much. Amen. If you receive that, then I want you to lift your hands at the Lord and give him a resounding praise and thanksgiving right now in the name of Jesus.